Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous and I am talking over the top beautiful postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Friday. It is it is Friday, August 12th, 2022. I keep reading about all these damn heat waves. Uh, it is going down into the 40s tonight, and uh, I'm going to be getting my heater out from under my bed in the tiny house, so uh, there you go. But being Friday, it is time for my weekly ecological meltdown roundup rant, which I have to find again because uh, you can find this in another rant. I... Uh, I, I was thrown off my feed by a celebratory message from uh, Al Gore, but you can find that elsewhere. So now I have to go back and try to find uh, what is on uh, Rhett Butler's mind. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. We got a lot of news about elephants. This is an elephant heavy, uh, but I am actually going to work backwards. We're going to start with the very last story in the roundup because I realize that no one will be with me when I get to it. So bringing up the rear of this long involved catalog of catastrophe we have this little note we have now crossed the land use change planetary boundary but solutions await according to experts we have passed the planetary boundary for land systems change which you can think of as the human-caused loss of forest and risk destabilizing Earth's operating systems. Hmm. Scientists calculate we must retain 85% of tropical and boreal forest and 50% of temperate forest to stay within Earth's safe operating bounds. But the number of trees worldwide has fallen by nearly 50% since the dawn of agriculture. And just from 2001 to 2021, forest area roughly half the size of China was lost or destroyed across the planet. Lost or destroyed. How do you lose an area of forest half the size of China, how do you lose that forest without destroying it? I I anyway, lost or destroyed. In 2021, that would be last year, which compared to this year is nothing, tropical forests disappeared at a rate of about 10 football fields per minute. But despite these losses, solutions abound. Here are some of the actions that could bring us back into the safe operating space of a planet. Okay, we can secure indigenous land rights I guess they have not read my book, Peruvian Plunge, about uh, what indigenous, what noble savages are doing to save the, uh, the rainforest, at least in Peru. There's always reforestation, you know, planting a bunch of palm oil plantations, and landscape restoration. Don't forget establishing new protected areas. New protected areas. You can see how well all of the old protected areas are working out uh, for our fellow earthlings. I, th I think the record is in. 
there is no such thing as a protected area on planet Earth as long as one human walks the planet. So uh, there's that solution. <clears throat> Establishing new protected areas. There is redesigning food systems. There is using finance as a tool and which may or may not have to do with that, bringing up the list of uh, solutions that could bring us back into the safe operating space of the planet. How about sterilizing the human race? I'm assuming, I, you know, this is just the little, uh, you know, the little, uh, you know, the little Cliff Notes version, uh, I guess you'll probably have to go into the, uh, the full article to find the solution, making planet Earth a human exclusion zone. There is one way to get this planet back into a safe operating zone. There's one way. Make this planet a human exclusion zone. Okay. All right, but now we're going to go up to the top, and as I say, there's a bunch of articles on elephants, especially Asian elephants, throughout uh, these emails. Leading off, meet the Indonesians on the front lines of elephant-human conflict in Sumatra. At the northern tip of Sumatra, herds of elephants have to deal with villagers entering their forest and eating their food. Incidents of elephant-human conflict have intensified as more of the elephant's habitat is raised for oil palm plantations and other developments. Yes, do you think so? Okay. And here is the next one. Chased from every side, Sumatran elephants pinned down by forest loss. Sumatran elephants in Indonesia's North Asa district are being increasingly pinned down in shrinking patches of forest amid the ongoing destruction of their habitat, primarily for oil palm plantations. This is driving an increase in elephant-human conflict with the animals forced into more frequent encounters with villagers who resent the elephants for destroying their crops and homes. Uh, you know, for the flip side uh, of maybe the elephants resent the humans for destroying their crops and homes. Yes. Conservationists say deforestation in the district overlaps with the elephant's migration routes and could grow worse under local government policies. Uh, anyway, we're just going to stick with the elephants. Here's a, one more. <clears throat> Saving Sumatran elephants starts with counting them. But Indonesia will not say how many elephants are left. Efforts to save the Sumatran elephant have been hamstrung by the Indonesian government's delay in releasing an updated conservation plan, which includes the latest population estimates. The last estimate from 2007 put the population at somewhere between 2,400 and 2,800 elephants, but even that <coughs> estimate was based on data <coughs> from the early 2000s. 
Mangabe has obtained a copy of the updated plan meant to be released back in 2019, which gives a population of 924 to 1,359 individual elephants. And remember, this is three years ago. This is a precipitous decline of 52 to 62% from the 2007 figure. Conservationists, including one who worked on the plan, have called for its publication to inform conservation matter, measures and note that similar plans for other iconic threatened species, including Sumatran tigers and orangutans, have also been delayed. Do you think so? And then let's check in what's going on with the African elephants. We have a jumbo task as Malawi moves 263 elephants to restock a degraded national park otherwise known as a protected area. So let's see. Uh, I guess they moved 263 uh, elephants from Lewande National Park to Kasungu National Park. Uh, Kasungu's elephant population was previously decimated by poaching, so they need to restock the protected area for the poachers. The poachers are out of shit to poach, so they're bringing in 263 fresh future elephant carcasses. Alright, but authorities say the park is now ready to host more elephants after years of anti-poaching and community engagement efforts. Okay guys, I'm, uh, I'm a little unclear. Y y you know, Manga Bay has uh, their own YouTube channel, and so this week, with no description of the video, the title of their YouTube video is Consumed Cocaine, and it's a, uh, don't know, this is all we know about, uh, <laughs> there you go, it is a black screen with three lines of cocaine across it. There you go. Uh, Manga Bay is a, well, we all know what it's about. It's about how the cocaine trade is taking down this planet. Uh, all right. We're going to go over to Nepal for this story, but uh, you better believe this story uh, is true of any country on the planet, including this one. And for the few people who actually stuck around for my rant last night talking about uh, how this corrupt uh, dictator over there in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, how he is teaming up with the U.S. Uh, to you know, to put together these stringent environmental impact assessments for opening up the Congolese national, uh, the Congolese uh, rainforest to oil development. And we have our esteemed Secretary of State, whatever his name was, Mr. Blinken, love that name, Mr. Blinken, but we're not talking about the Congo tonight, although we could be. Okay, this could be Nepal, the Congo, Brazil, and of course, the good old United States of America. No critical examination of flawed environmental assessments in Nepal, experts say. Nepal has for decades required... <clears throat> environmental impact assessments 
EIAs be conducted for development projects, but their quality and monitoring has been largely ineffective, experts say. Wow. <clears throat> the issue came to light earlier this year when the top court canceled an airport project in part because of its flawed EIA, which included entire passages lifted directly from another EIA about a hydropower project. And actually, guys, uh, I, I have no problem with that uh, because it doesn't matter. Airport, hydroelectric project, whatever the hell it is, uh, opening up more drilling on our public lands in, a, in Alaska so we can save the planet with the IRA. Uh, anyway, this, this is real. Uh, this, this is real no shit Sherlock news. All right. Again, you will not believe this one directly from the No Shit Sherlock news desk. <clears throat> we have an analysis. We have an analysis by Investigate Europe. Okay. <clears throat> the Investigate Europe analysis, pesticides are creating a biodiversity crisis in Europe and everywhere else on the planet. We are in a biodiversity crisis with insects particularly in trouble. Insects that were once commonplace just a few decades ago are today a rare sight. I did see finally some uh, honeybees on the Joe Pie weed today. My first sighting of a bunch of honeybees, I have spied one monarch butterfly on my Joe Pie weed. Although the tiger swallowtail population seems pretty good. Uh, but we're talking about European insects. Insects that were once commonplace just a few decades ago are today a rare sight. After climate change, industrial scale, after climate change, industrial scale agriculture with its heavy reliance on pesticides must take much of the blame. One obvious solution is to make farming more sustainable. Yes, by not using pesticides. But then, of course, if you try to go with these sustainable uh, farming methods, about half of the population would starve to death, which is the halfway point to the next solution, which is, of course, making Europe and the rest of the planet a human exclusion zone would end the biodiversity crisis on the planet. There is one biodiversity crisis on the, well, there's 8 billion biodiversity crises on this planet. The EU did have a plan. It's farm to fork strategy. Say that real quick. Uh, Ten times its farm to fork strategy that includes a new regulation to have pesticide use by 2030. Then came the war in Ukraine. It is Vladimir Putin's fault once again. Then came Vladimir Putin, and with fears over food security politicians started to lose their nerve. Do you think so? Investigative Europe explores what happens when plans for sweeping reform come up against mighty business interest. Take a wild guess what happens. And of course the same thing is happening with coal companies. All right. 
okay, here is, this is what counts as good news uh, on a planet in the year 2022. This is, I, I guess this is the definition of good news in the year 2022. Cambodian government cancels development of Nam Tamal Forest amid outcry. All right. Cambodia's prime minister has intervened to stop the destruction of a forest outside the country's capital, but not before developers managed to clear between 500 and 600 acres, nearly 1,000 500 acres of the forest in one week. More than half of the Nam Tamal forest had been parceled out to politically connected tycoons, prompting widespread condemnation from conservationists, environmental activists, and the general public. Yes. Environmentalists and local communities have welcomed the Prime Minister's order canceling developments in the forest, but say the damage already done is extensive. Do you think so? Is the Nam Tao forest half empty or half full? Uh, here is the latest uh, look at seagrass. Overlooked and at risk, seagrass is habitat of choice for many small-scale fishermen. Seagrass meadows, rather than coral reefs, are the fishing grounds of choice for many fishing households in four countries in the Indo-Pacific region, a new study shows. <clears throat> Fishermen in Cambodia, Tanzania, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka identified seagrass meadows as being more easily accessible than coral reefs, often without the need for a boat. Yes, however, seagrass, seagrasses around, around the world are disappearing at rates that rival those of coral reefs and tropical rainforest, losing as much as 7% of their area each year. Do you think so? All right. What is going on with gorillas in the Cameroon? I'm pretty shocked to hear there are gorillas still living in the Cameroon, but uh come back in five years and let's see uh, what threats are facing the Cameroonian gorillas. Uh, Ebo Forest, we have two, so this is two articles next to each other about the Ebo Forest in Cameroon and Sub-Saharan Africa. Ebo Forest in southwestern Cameroon hosts a rare an enigmatic population of western gorillas. A new study analyzes how gorillas use the forest. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, while not directly targeted for hunting, the gorillas face a multitude of threats including gathering of forest products, a road construction project, which we're getting ready to talk about, and the secondary effects of other species in their habitat being hunted for bushmeat. And what they're talking about there mostly is those snares, those wire snares that are being set in, inside, the, you know, this uh, national park. Uh, so these poachers claim we didn't mean to kill the gorilla. We meant to kill this other fellow earthling. That's the one we meant to kill inside a national park and throw in the stew pot. How can we help it if gorillas are so stupid that they walk into a snare 
you know, meant for a pig or an antelope. Those dumb gorillas, but of course uh, it is road developments uh, that are always on the top of the list. As a private road sparks fears for Cameroon's Evo Forest, bulldozers have opened, or have opened, I love that, bulldozers have, you know, obliterated off the face of the planet uh, about 25 miles or 40 kilometers of road into the very heart of the biodiverse Ebo forest in southwestern Cameroon, raising fears this will accelerate illegal logging and poaching. Yes, a group of local politicians and businessmen is backing the new road, which is being built without consultation with communities around the forest, without an environmental impact assessment, and without planning permission. Hmm. Cameroonians have written an open letter to the EU, the U.S., and other donors asking them to intervene. Yes. <clears throat> Cameroon's Minister for Forest and Wildlife has reacted by ordering <coughs> the ministry's regional representative to carry out an immediate investigation. Yes. Those senior government officials in the area attended a launch ceremony for the project in May. Do you think so? Uh, let's see, I know there was one uh, somewhere about uh, about some road and as long as we're talking about roads, gee, study warns of increased poaching if road through Brazil's Iwaku is reopened. A recent study validates environmental groups' concerns that reopening a long closed road through Brazil's Iguaçu National Park would lead to an increase in environmental violations inside the protected area. Two bills currently before Congress. If one fails, then we got the other one to fall back on. Call for reopening the Estrada do Colono, or the Settlers Road, which was shut down in 2001 and has since been reclaimed by the jungle. The study found that reopening it would expose at least 10,000 hectares, otherwise known as 25,000 acres of the National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site to wildlife poaching, illegal fishing, and extraction of palm heart. Between 2000 and 2019, you know, when there was no road, more than 1,300 notices of environmental violations were issued in the park. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, uh, well, as long as we're down there in Brazil, let's go from the Amazon rainforest to the Pantanal wetlands, you know, the biggest wetlands on the planet, you will not believe this, that a new Brazilian bill puts cattle pasture over Pantanal wetland. Wow. A bill loosening restrictions on cattle ranching in the Pantanal. Can you imagine what the restrictions on cattle ranching in the Pantanal already look like? Maybe there were two of them, and now there's one of them. A bill loosening <coughs> the, the, the restrictions on cattle ranching in the Pantanal wetland has been approved by Mato Grosso State Legislature 
prompting concerns it could lead to the loss of thousands of acres of native vegetation. The Pantanal is a major transitional area between the country's other major biomes, the Amazon rainforest, the Atlantic forest, and the Cerrado grasslands, and its wet area has already shrunk 29% since the 1980s. Yes, advocates, meaning the cattle ranchers and people who eat beef, people who eat beef say they hope the new bill will bring an additional one million head of cattle to the Pantanal and improve declining socioeconomic parameters. But critics have warned of long-term environmental impacts. Uh, another bill currently being heard in the Brazilian Congress aims simply to cut the state of Mato Grosso completely out of the country's legally defined Amazon region, further reducing the protection of biomes within the state. Oh, I guess I missed this one on, uh, on the elephant survey. We, uh, now let's go over to Bangladesh looking at elephant. Now I have to admit, guys, I am utterly shocked that there is a single wild elephant left in Bangladesh. I, uh, I am more shocked that there's wild elephants left in Bangladesh than I am that there's wild gorillas in Cameroon. But, again, I uh, come back in five years. Bangladesh struggles to protect the last of its wild elephants. Habitat loss, forest degradation, and encroachment into forest reserves, otherwise known as humans overrunning protected areas, are driving Asian elephants into human habitats in search of food. I love it. Humans searching for food are driving, element, are driving elephants into human habitats in search of food, increasing elephant-human conflict. In 2016, there were only 268 resident elephants still alive in Bangladesh. More than 50 of them have been killed in the past five years, and 34 of those 50 were killed in 2021 alone. Yes, Bangladesh technically has 12 identified elephant corridors, although at least one no longer serves that function due to forest degradation, human settlements, grabbing of forest land, and unplanned development. Yes. Kiss goodbye, the Bangladesh uh, elephants. Here is a look at how uh, lack of rain and fertilizer is hitting the rice crop. And again, I don't know why they keep picking on Nepal. Uh, Anyway, we're going to rescue Indonesia's coral reefs by spider webs. All right. We have a chorus of skepticism growing louder, you know, against uh, deep sea mining, which should kick off next year. Uh, I'm just going since I realize I'm talking to myself. Here is hundreds of iconic Barbary macaques feared dead in Morocco forest fire. A wildfire has burned through half of the Balshem Forest Reserve in northern Morocco, 
one of the few remaining refuges of the Barbary macaque. And Lord, as long as we're talking about wildfires in Indonesia's forest fire forest fire capital, the dry season brings yet more burning. The onset of the dry season in Indonesia's Riau province has seen flare have seen fires flare up and multiply. Some of them are believed to have been set deliberately. Yes, more than 1,000 hectares or 2,500 acres of land have burned so far this year, a sharp increase from the 417 acres in the first three months of the year. Yes, they're looking at cloud seeding to induce rainfall to put out the fire. Uh, okay, what is going? One more here, guys. Billions, meaning billions of humans, rely on wild species for food, energy, and more. A recently released summary of an assessment from the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services reveals that people rely on 50,000 wild species of plants, animals, algae, and fungi, but it warns that the global biodiversity crisis threatens the sustenance and services that these fellow earthlings provide. According to the assessment, more than 10,000 wild species alone provide humans with food and 2.4 billion people rely on firewood often from wild growing trees <coughs> to cook with. Yes, uh, people don't realize that uh, it is firewood uh, is uh, one of the leading causes of deforestation. It's the one that nobody wants to talk about. These hordes of the little brown and black people over there that honkies are not allowed to talk about because if you point out about entire forest uh, disappearing, I, I mean these these people need something to cook their bush meat with. <clears throat> if you live in Madagascar, you have 14 children to feed, and you have an endangered lemur to cook, and you can't afford uh, propane anymore because of it's Vladimir Putin's fault. What are you going to do to cook your lemur to feed your 14 children? You're going to go cut down a tree behind your mud hut. You're going to burn, cut down the last tree to cook the last lemur. And then what the hell are your 14 children going to eat? But uh, anyway, you need to be careful what you say when you are a white boy with a southern accent pointing out facts. But I need to wrap this up because uh, it is a gorgeous evening and uh, I got to put some damn, uh, I got to put my Uggs on and find a jacket to put on and to enjoy this beautiful moonrise tonight. And I highly suggest you bundle up on this cold August night while you still can. Bye guys.